questions that you have, let me just say this before we to take questions. I truly am grateful for the fact that although it was a low turnout, as was expected, it was a much better turnout than anybody predicted, better than it was last time, even four years ago, on both sides. We don't know the final tally, but it looks like it'll be somewhere in the 16 percent range, roughly, for Republicans, about 20 percent range for Democrats. And that would be about what would be expected, given uh, the competitiveness on one side versus the other. Uh, certainly hotly contested on the D side, uh, but good, a good race on both sides. I mean, you had four candidates on each side. Everybody, with rare exception, was out there working it on both sides. And I appreciate the voters of Kentucky for stepping up. I really, truly am grateful. It's the greatest privilege we have is to go to the ballot box. And while 15 to 20 percent is rather sad, nonetheless, better than had been predicted. Uh, and I think bodes well for the kind of interest we'll see when we get to the general election, certainly relative to historical perspective. So thank you to those who voted. Certainly thank you to those who voted for us. Uh, we're grateful to be going forward into the general election, and it's seemingly clear as to who the other candidates will be. So happy to answer any specific questions that you have. Governor sure. Bevin, they just called it that Nita Bashir will win the Democratic nomination. Your thoughts on, on that race moving into November? This has been his uh, election, uh, frankly, to lose. Uh, and there was a possibility that he could, but it doesn't look like he did. So this isn't that surprising. I think any and all of you who have ever asked me my thoughts on this, I think the same for Ralph as we've been asked about it. We've generally thought that. We don't have a crystal ball. We can't predict these things. But this is not a surprising uh, outcome. I, I think it's a little concerning for him that he couldn't even hit 40 percent of the electorate. But in fairness, it was a tight race with three credible candidates on that side. And so uh, we'll see what they can do on that side going forward. You think you'll come out on top in November? Oh, yes. I mean, here's what you're going to have is a very clear, clear contrast, a very clear contrast on issues that matter significantly to people in Kentucky. You have in Andy Bashir somebody who proudly supported Hillary Clinton. That doesn't play well in Kentucky. It didn't then, it doesn't now, uh, and for good reason. You have in, in Andy Bashir somebody who literally brought NARAL in just in the last couple of days to help push him over the top in this primary, who's strongly and unapologetically pro-abortion. I mean, the contrast with Ralph and myself, who are strongly pro-life, who are supported by President Trump and supportive of the values of the people of Kentucky, it will be a binary choice. At this point, all the hypotheticals and the other possibilities are going to fade away. And people in Kentucky are going to have a very clear and distinct choice to make. Uh, and the voters will decide. Governor, what message do you take from the margin, your margin of victory today, which was narrower than some Republicans? It was. But, but, but understand this. We were outspent significantly. I spoke with Robert Goforth. We had a great conversation. He ran a good race. I'll be honest. I mean, he did what is needed to try to win. He dropped a lot of mailers. He did a lot of uh, footwork. I mean, he was at a lot of dinners. He drove a lot of miles. He shook a lot of hands. He did what is needed to get your name out there and your ID. He did very well where both he and Mike Hogan, his running mate, are from eastern Kentucky. And they did a good job out there in making the case for themselves. So, you know, God bless him. I appreciated the call from him. I, I love the fact that in America we have this ability, even within parties, even when someone's an incumbent, that anybody who wants to do the work can step up and make the case. So frankly, I think he did a, a credible job of making the case for himself. Certainly with some people, he got 30-some percent of the vote. I don't know that the final numbers are in, but he did a good job. What, what do you think of the margin versus what you had been expecting? I didn't. I, have I ever struck any of you as people who uh, do polling or predict things? I mean, I... I, I didn't even have a comparison to put it to. I'm not, it's about what I would have expected when people asked me earlier. I expect that he would get 30-something percent. The amount of money he spent, the amount of time that he spent, certainly what you would expect. The real issue, it's, it's a moot point now. It's, it's topical maybe tonight and maybe in this moment. Uh, a day from now, certainly a week from now, it will be irrelevant. Nobody will even remember or talk about it. And the choice will be Ralph Alvarado and myself against you know Bashir and Coleman. That's going to be the ticket. And, the, and it's going to be a remarkably stark contrast between the two kin, uh, tickets, conservative versus liberal, black and white, night and day.
that clear. Do you anticipate President Trump coming to Kentucky a number of times? Sure. A number of times. It would be a, more than a little presumptuous of me to assume that the President of the United States is going to go anywhere uh, a number of times in the next six months. But he's a good friend. He's a strong supporter. It's mutual. I respect the man. He loves America. He's busting his tail to address hard things that need to be discussed. We have a good relationship. He will be here. He's made that clear. I look forward to it. The people of Kentucky look forward to it. Uh, how many times? We'll see. I mean, I, I couldn't even begin to imagine. Governor, what about debates? Would you be willing to Oh, sure. I mean, it's appropriate. Of course. I hope we have both govern gubernatorial and lieutenant governor level debates. Without any question. I mean, your thoughts on that? Why, why would we not? We owe that to people. They don't always make a lot of sense in crowded primaries unless it's like on the D side they need to each make the case. But in a general election, absolutely. I think we owe that to people. Andy Bashir has told voters he's the guy that has the nap Do you think that'll matter in November? No. Nope, I don't. I don't. And because it's, it, it's not true, for starters. I mean, shall, suing me is not beating me. It's not. And in reality, he's lost far more cases of significance than he has won. In all of the claims about things like suing more people than any other attorney general, how many dollars has he brought into the state of Kentucky? I mean, really. The reality is it's a lot of empty talk, but this is what we've been getting from Bashir's for about 10 years. And now the people will have this choice. If they want four more years of empty Bashir, they're going to have that opportunity. I don't think they do. Other questions about anything for myself, for Ralph? Governor, what do you think will be the defining issues in this campaign? What do you think? I mean, here's they, they want to talk about the pension, even when they don't want to talk about the pension. It's topical now. And this is what it needed to be. We needed to make sure that this came to the forefront. And, Ralph, you could speak to this. I mean, obviously, everybody has known it for some time. But even within the legislature, it was not, wasn't something people discussed. It was ignored for a long time. And now it is on the table. It's got to be addressed. It hasn't been. Adoption and foster care. Tremendous amount of effort being spent in this state to make Kentucky the gold standard. Tort reform, judicial reform, these things are going to be topical. Not fun, not easy, not pleasant, but the reality is they have to be discussed. Economic development, getting our corporate and, and individual tax rates in line with competitive uh, rates with other states. These things modernizing our tax code. All these things will be topics of conversation. Still a lot of cleanup. A lot of things have piled up over the years here in Kentucky. A lot of bad policy for the better part of 100 years. And now we're just cleaning it up. And so it's going to be, again, a very stark contrast. The one thing I will say about this race, I mean, the difference between our ticket and that ticket is going to be very, very clear to voters in very short order. Governor, the, let me help me with this question. This question the finance cabinet had a contract with some in the Annapolis lawyers to look at is it the Bashir administration am I right or wrong on that and is their report completed or is that still ongoing I don't know what you're talking about okay. so there was a inspector general the Taft from uh, uh, Mr. Kohak's office I think uh, working for uh, I don't know do you have do you guys have any questions about this race at all or about this election you're I don't even know what that's about any questions at all about this election, about any of the other candidates? Uh, let me say this. I want to say congratulations to others that seemingly are known. I'll speak from the Republican side. It looks like Daniel Cameron will be the nominee on the attorney general front. Talk about a marked difference between him and Greg Stumbo. The Democrat Party is doing nothing but recycling tired, stale, outdated names with tired, stale, outdated ideas. Greg Stumbo, my gracious. I can't think of anybody that would not be a... Uh, let me just say there's going to be a clear choice for people on that front as well. Um, and, and then it would look like Michael Adams, I think. Have we seen anything? It looks like he's winning on this front. Uh, that, was a, that was a tough one. I'll tell you, there was a lot of good candidates on the Republican side uh, running there. It looks like he will be the nominee. Solid. There's probably nobody in America that will know more about election law that's either running for and in a position to win as Secretary of State anywhere in America than Michael Adams. Super sharp guy and certainly knows a thing or two about that. There's going to be a clear contrast there as well. Um, I mean, again, you look at Heather French Henry. I, I think highly of her as a person, but my goodness, her husband uh, has, has been a poster child for everything that election law should not be about. 
and the violations and the things of this sort, the fact that she would be the nominee, it would seem, coming out on that side to uphold something that her husband has been repeatedly in violation of, uh, that's not a good way to come out of the gate. Uh, so there's going to be some interesting contrast. Allison Ball, Mike Harmon, of course, right back to it with no primaries on, on their side. I think each is likely to win again in the fall. Very strong candidates. And Ryan Quarles has done a great job as the agricultural commissioner. Uh, is winning, you know, 80-some-odd percent of the vote and certainly, I think, is going to be solid for the next four years in the same role. Now, now that the election's over, do you have any thoughts as to when the special session might happen or anything like that? Any thoughts, uh, member of the legislature here? This is, this is one of 138 people who are going to have more to say about that than I will. We've been uh, working hard with a lot of members of the House and the Senate. Uh, we're very close. Uh, we just got to make sure that we have the votes in hand before we call it. So um, it's very close. I'll leave it at that. And a lot of, uh, a lot of individuals. There's going to be a couple of windows of opportunity before July the 1st. So we're, uh, we're optimistic, but we've got to make sure we have the votes on board. Governor, Here's the results today. The, the relatively narrow margin versus expert. You're like a one-trick pony over there, Tom. Well, do, does that diminish in any way or hurt your chances of winning support of the no. Republicans? If you remember four years ago at this time, I won by 83 votes. So the answer to that would be no. Do you feel like you have your work cut out for you, especially with the, the protests and trying to earn back some of the votes no. that most people let us? No, I mean, again, any, anyone in elected office always, every day, has to earn and then earn back and retain the votes, no question. Take nothing for granted. And even now, while I am confident that we will win because the market difference is going to be so obvious to people, in no way, shape, or form is that a given, not even remotely. And as I said, it will, I believe, be ours to lose. Could we lose it? We could. Do I think we will? I don't. I really don't. But the reality is as soon as we assume it's in the bag and we take our foot off the, the, the gas, that's the beginning of the end for people politically. So without question, there's, there, are, there are connections that need to be initiated and made for the first time, others that need to be re-engaged with. But all of this is going to become very clear to people. Really, let's be honest, no one's going to pay that much attention until after Labor Day. We're all going to be back together with a sense of urgency September, October, and the first week in November. Last time, uh, won 106 out of 120 counties. So there's 14 counties right there to start with. And Senator, now that you're in the general, what is your biggest task being on this ticket between now and November? For mine? Yeah. I, besides being eye candy. Uh, no, I wish. I mean, for my wife, maybe. But um, ultimately, it's really to, to uh, I think, enhance uh, the communication of what the governor's accomplished. I think it's important for us to point out the partnership. That's, that's occurred between this governor and the, currently the General Assembly to look at um, really the success that we've had over the past three years. You take a look at the amount of jobs that have been created in this state, the amount of private investment that's occurred in this state, the lowest unemployment we've got in this state right now. I mean, it's remarkable what's been done in just three years. When you take a look at 96 years of what's we had an opportunity in this state by control by one party and how little occurred during that time and what we've been able to get done in three years, it's really going to be a pretty stark choice to either look at where we can either move forward with what we've been doing and the successes that we've had or we can go backwards with Bashir at this point. And I think it's going to be an obvious choice for people. I think nobody can doubt in western Kentucky, eastern Kentucky, central Kentucky, the north and the south, and there's more stuff coming. So I think as people see the opportunities we have in this state, I think you can just take a look at the campaigns of people trying to use old policies, old ideas that haven't worked here, and you have an opportunity with a governor with the vision that's brought that forward and brought the General Assembly with him to start moving this state into heights it needs to achieve. And I think we're all tired of watching Kentucky always be in the bottom five of all categories. We're ready to be top five when it comes to economic opportunities, with engineering, with manufacturing jobs, to have people want to come to this state and move into this state, and we're ready for that. So I'm, I'm here to enhance that message, let people know what we're looking for and the vision that we've got. This is the party of the future for Kentucky as a Republican Party. This is the party of diversity for the future of Kentucky. Take a look at who the nominees are right now on the Republican side, and you can make your own judgments. This is reflective of where this country and where this state needs to go, and I'm here to enhance that message. Governor, it's still early, but have you heard from the White House yet this evening? I have not spoken with the White House this evening. I have not. I, earlier today, but not, uh, not since the race was called. Other questions about anything at all? Thank you all for being here. In all seriousness, this really is very good chili. It is good. And if you like chili, come have some chili. There's plenty of it. We've got cookies, too. We'll bring those out as well. Uh, but thanks for being here. Thanks for covering this. Uh, get ready. It's going to be an interesting campaign. It really will, will, will be. Uh, and we'll see a lot of each other over the summer, but mostly over the fall. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.